Hello and welcome back to Clownfish TV. It is me, Geeky Sparkles, and I am here today without Neon because he is off doing other things. So we are going to talk today about a couple things. One, the New York Times put this article out about the man in charge of reimagining Disney movies. So now we know who to blame for all the live action remakes that suck and are unnecessary. And most people think we don't need more of, yet Disney keeps tripling down on. I also saw, thanks to Lorena Creole, that um, Scott Gustin posted in this article is a little tiny snippet of a quote that says, uh, we are getting Hocus Pocus 3. Because yeah, that makes sense. Hocus Pocus 2 did so well and won over so many people that we have to do a third one. We're also getting Maleficent 3 because when the movie failed at the box office, it makes complete sense to make another one. At this point, it seems more like Sean's just making movies so that he can keep his job. And Disney wants write-offs because I don't understand why you'd sink all this money into these productions which are not gonna do well. And Hocus Pocus 2, I talked to many nor normies about that film. A lot of people don't even know what I do. And they were talking about how they were having this big watch party and they were gonna do all this really cool stuff and they were so excited and they saw the movie and they thought it sucked. And I heard overwhelmingly from people, they thought that that film sucked and it had a couple good parts, but it just was not the what the first one was at all or anywhere close to it. So um, we're gonna talk about that. Please like and subscribe. Uh, if you do, I'll give you a woohoo. Woohoo! Please bear with me. Um, I'm gonna be talking a little weird because my mouth hurts. I had surgery a couple days ago and um, talking kind of aggravates it. So I'm gonna do my best. We'll, we'll look at this article here first. So we're gonna start with this. The man reimagining Disney classics for today's world. Sean Bailey is in charge of live action remakes. Good job, Sean. Mm -hmm. This is also I wanna point out written by Brooks because that comes up later. Brooks, another dude, okay, wrote this article. I, I love it when men tell me as a woman what to think and how to feel. So for more than a decade, Sean Bailey has run Disney's reimagining Factory. Factory is about right. Factory, I think, is one word in this article that I think gets it correct. Um, talking about how they are you know, basically slamming out these live action films. Aladdin got this much money, Lion King, you know, Beauty and the Beast, all of them did really well. We're going to talk about them later with some numbers to compare to Little Mermaid because the media is running with, it's a, oh my God, it's winning. Not really. Anyway, I love this. They showcase ideas from another era, especially when it comes to gender roles. Be pretty girls and things might work out. No, that's not what was going on. Brooks, damn it. Mm, stop telling women how to think and feel. I'm tired of men like Brooks here and Sean here telling women what's what. Look, I understand updating things. I understand there's some problematic aspects of different things, but I'm also this whole idea that a showcase from another era, you know, I, we're seeing this a lot and I'm tired of hearing it because yeah, sometimes you, you know, women were portrayed, um, in a way that was demeaning, but oftentimes they weren't. And I'm tired of hearing that, like some kind of, you just be pretty. I don't know, Brooks, be pretty, and maybe you can get a better job than writing shitty articles like this. Um, they're talking to his, about his different movies. Oh yeah, and the, I love this, okay. The reimaginings, as Mr. Bailey refers to his remakes, find ways to make Disney stories less retrograde. His heroines are empowered, and his casting emphasizes diversity. A live action Snow White set for release next year stars Latina actress Rachel Zegler. Yeah, no. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, Sean. You know, people were saying about Little Mermaid, okay, you can make her, you know, you can race better, make her black because, you know, it's just a mermaid. It's not a cultural character like Tiana or, you know, Nani. Those are cultures and you have to respect those cultures. Snow White is literally called Snow White because her skin was as white as snow. That is the actual description of the character. Even people who are on board with race bending Ariel have been saying, you know what? I'll give you Ariel, but she's literally Snow White. If you were going to take one character and not race bend her, that would be the one to not change because she's literally called Snow White because she's Snow fucking White. You know, making it, this is not the win you think it is. This is just, you know, there's pandering a little bit. And then there's just being like over the top pandering. And that's Snow White. 
because it's so fucking ridiculous that even the people you have on board are like, yeah, that one. Because mm -mm. all you're telling people, all you're telling kids are, you know, we want to see more representation, more like the world today. But what you're telling kids are, you're okay as long as you're not white. You know, then, you know, and women, you're empowered as long as, you know, you're single and you're not white. I'm just like, this is stupid. You can be empowered and be, you know, with a, another person, be it male or female or non-binary or whatever. You can be more empowered being with somebody than being by yourself. Some people are more empowered being by themselves. It just is up to the person. And this whole one size fits all narrative is a very narrow minded. And it comes from people like Brooks here. Anyway. Oh, yes, and they're going to talk about Yari, is it Sh Shahidi, who played Tinkerbell and Peter Pan and Wendy, because that did so well. Um, you want to reflect the world as it exists, Mr. Bailey said. Well, what world is that? Because it's all fairy tales anyway, right? And I'm so tired of hearing Wendy as exists. I, I'll give you some changes, but some of the changes like Snow White. No, dude. No, just stop. And they're talking about how, you know, they're talking about a very unpol... They're <laughs> they're this Brooks guy. He said, business strategy is increasingly, but Disney and Mr. Bailey, a low profile and self-effacing executive, my ass, is in the middle of a very loud, very unpolite cultural fight. Brooks here imagines himself a culture warrior. Okay, Brooks, sit down and shut up. For every person who applauds Disney, there seems to be a counterpart who complains about the force-fed wokeness. Because it is! And the box office numbers are proving that. There is a definite difference between during a movie or a, a show that happens to be organically diverse and inclusive, okay? And then doing a show that's all about diversity and inclusion, masquerading as a show. That's the difference. It's not about woke. I don't even like using the term wokeness, Brooks. That's you using the term. And the thing is, people can smell it a mile away. They're so tired of being preached at. And you also are under this assumption that it's just people that, you know, like, it's just white people that don't like it. Thing is, Brooks, there are a lot of people who aren't white who didn't like the changes. There's a lot of people who aren't white, Brooks, who were sitting there saying, hey, you know what? I don't know why the Little Mermaid has to be black now. Why can't we have new characters? Brooks here is narrow-minded and trying to paint everything in his with his paintbrush and then telling everybody else how they're doing the same thing. So they're talking about the people coming under fire for different, you know, culture war warrior things and partisan things and... They're talking about the Little Mermaid and how um, they're talking about they're mad about how people are mad she's she's black now and they because they picked the character as white and cleaned the theme parks. Well, of course they picked her as white in the theme parks too because she's been white for like ever. Okay, I mean that's not problematic. That's just reality, dude. And they're talking about how a torrent of racist comments on social media and fan sites. And, you know, they're talking about the, that person about there's not enough slavery in it. And, you know, oh, about the straight makeup artist for Ursula. Because don't you know, you can only hire somebody who is a makeup artist like you. So since Ursula clearly looks like a drag queen, only a drag queen makeup artist can be hired. That doesn't even make sense. God, Brooks, stay in your little corner and shut up. Keep sucking your thumb. We don't want to hear it. I love it. Disney has regarded these kinds of social media storms as tempest and teapots. Here's the thing about tempest and a teapot. What that expression means is like it's a little swirling thing in a tiny thing. So it's a tiny, tiny little storm. Tempest in a teapot. It's not a tiny storm. That's the problem. Be it this, be it Star Wars, be it Marvel, be it whatever. You're facing declining returns film after film after film show after show after show and the one common denominator is your ridiculous need to be so ham-fisted about every fucking thing you could do it and you could still do you could still do a, a, these characters in a certain way and it would still succeed if you just you know reined it in somewhat but no sean is trying to tell everybody else how to think especially women and thanks to sean women have, have now, are now are seen and heard Hot damn, thanks, man. Thanks for that. I'm glad the man stood up for me. Um, they're talking about uh, the different movies. They're talking about they thought Little Mermaid was going to do $1 billion worldwide. And they're hearing now it's probably going to do closer to $600 million, Okay. Largely because the film faltered overseas, where it was review bombed with online trolls flooding movie sites with racist one-star reviews. So your excuse is, according to Brooks here, is that, there was in 51 markets outside the United States 
and the rest of the world's all racist. That's that's their story. It's not because people didn't want to see the movie because they didn't care and they're tired of live action remakes or whatever reason. No, it's because of racism. And while, yes, I completely believe people did give it one star reviews unfairly, I also completely believe people gave it five star reviews unfairly as well to offset the one star reviews. It's so ridiculous that now IMDb was taking scores that were like low. We're weighting them in, but we're not giving them as much weight. So like if you were, you legitimately rated it a two because you thought it wasn't good. That score will probably be weighted in, but if you gave it a five and you never saw it, that one will count fully because you know it's five and it's positive. So we gotta we gotta show for for Hollywood and for Disney. I mean, they're paying good money. I mean, we gotta do the right thing here. But you're basically accusing all the other countries of being racist because you 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 race swapped the fucking character. You race swapped the character for no reason. And then it's everybody else who's a terrible person. Now, like in China or whatever, they do tend to be more racist towards the black people. That is true. That being said, you're accusing everyone of the same thing. And that's just stupid. I think people are just like, why are we race swapping a character? I think you went too far and you just like, people are like, okay, you know, we like diversity inclusion. But when you're ham fisted so hard that you're ramming that fist at people's asses, they don't like it. Yeah, some people do. You know, and those are the ones that are kissing your ass. But most people don't like your fist shoved up their ass. I'm just saying. And then they're they're not gonna they're not gonna give it all the support you wanted. They just didn't want the movie. They're like, why? Why are we doing this? And then they're talking about how Bailey had box office ones that failed, like the Lone Ranger, Jungle Cruise, and Milan. Well, Jungle Cruise and Milan, a couple things about there. Jungle Cruise and Milan failed because it was pandemic. But beyond that, Milan. Let's look at Milan. One of the reasons Milan did so shit was because Bailey here and Disney went and got people in China to be on a committee to to, to go over everything and make changes to appeal to that audience because they were going to focus on the audience in China because a movie for China, China has all the money. We're going to focus on that and who cares about Americans? And we're going to change our story and change elements of the story to appeal to that audience. For all their claims about diversity and inclusion, they cut the kiss scene because in the kiss scene, I think the way they did it, was that the guy thought Mulan was a guy. And so Dursi inclusion my inclusion my ass because it, there was a lot of trans people were like, yay, representation. And they cut it out because it would make China mad. And then it failed in China because people in China didn't want it and their own media was told not to cover it. It fucking failed in China who you, you barely went after so hard. So, I mean, I don't know what you expect. Here, here's, here's what I love. Okay, ready? Ready for this one? Ready for this one from Brooks? Disney live action films did not often showcase women before Mr. Bailey arrived. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, man, for making me feel seen. Um, And diversity was almost non-existent. Mr. Bailey almost exclusively focused on female-led stories. If Disney was so wanting to be, you know, down with it being up, you know, with the right, the right type of representation, the right type of people. Why the fuck is Mr. Bailey in charge? Shouldn't it be a woman? And shouldn't it be a woman who's not white? I mean, but when push comes to shove, it's a white dude empowering women. I'm sorry. You know what? I don't need you to empower me. Plus the characters in these live action films were already like a lot of times, you know, for the time they weren't like the stereotypes you say they are now. And beyond that, the diversity, you didn't even start really doing that until recently. You only started doing that last few years. So Mr. Bailey wasn't, you know, the one, he did it when the mandate shifted. It's not like he invented it. When we had women, strong female characters in animation and Disney live action projects well before Mr. Bailey showed up. God, women, you, 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 thank God that Mr. Bailey came, that Sean Bailey came so that you feel seen now. And he changed her, all, all the stories that you love to be, you know, this way because he, he's giving you empowerment. He's not mansplaining you at all. It's, it's, fuck it. And, and then Mr. Brooks here, Brooks, Brooks, what's his nuts, is telling you, you know, oh, you know, you need women, you know, thank God for Mr. Bailey. Because if I wasn't here writing this article telling you how to feel and Mr. Bailey wasn't doing the movies telling you what to think, what would you do? And they don't, and, and they do it completely unironically, not even seeing the hypocrisy in the whole thing. It's like, God, it's so stupid. 
Then he goes into the Haunted Mansion and talks about that because, you know, there's a lot of diversity in the Haunted Mansion. The one thing about the Haunted Mansion movie coming out that I want to see it actually is that the focus isn't on, hey, look, we're diverse. It's just like, hey, a good movie cast happens to be diverse. But we're going to show you like the different ghosts from the mansion, a lot of the Easter eggs from the mansion. Characters that have moved in are, are not white. But that's not even a focus of the film, as it should be. God. Oh, yeah. And here's what I talk about it. Talk about the new movies in development. Moana, Hercules, Lilo and Stitch. They forgot to mention Bambi. And Hocus Pocus 3. Because, you know, they didn't ruin it the first time. So I just go on about, you know, Mr. Bailey, Mr. Bailey, Mr. Bailey is so great. I just can't wait to, like, mm, get him alone. Mr. Bailey. The whole article is just this person sucking Mr. Bailey's ass. But I want to talk here about The Little Mermaid. They're going on about The Little Mermaid. It's a win. It's a win. It soars to impressive feats. It's such a win. The Little Mermaid right now is at $326 million globally. Not terrible, but if they're thinking it's only going to hit $600 million, not great. Compare to, to compare. Aladdin, week two, global, $446 million. Lion King, just week two domestic, not global, $350 million. Beauty and the Beast live action by second, like by 14 days, $766.5 million worldwide. No, it is not in the same ballpark as them. It is not winning. It is not beating them. It is not because, oh, some people that are racist in another country that's kind of racist by you saying that um, didn't like it or didn't go see it. You're just using people as a shield. And it's really insulting. I am so fucking tired of being people's shields. I'm sure people that are diverse are so tired of being people's shields. Maybe it just sucked. I mean, I'm not saying this one did, but I'm just like, maybe people just didn't want to see it. Maybe people just, you know, are tired of live action remakes. Maybe that has nothing to do with racism. Maybe people that are like, not white want to see characters that are non-white characters, not just white hand-me-downs. They just, you know, stick a coat of paint on them and say, here you go, it's a new character just for you. Maybe they want to see characters that actually reflect them. I, I know, crazy, right? Talking like a nut now. Anyway... My mouth is giving out, so I'm going to wrap it up. Please like and subscribe, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.